Hi, I'm John Geckler for the Gibbs Singleton Museum of Fine Art in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And today I want to talk a little bit about Gibbs' series of Don Quixote. So Don Quixote is one of the most popular themes in art. You remember it's been done by Doré and Dali and Picasso, plus books and movies and operas. We know of at least three Don Quixotes that Gibb did. The first one was a really abstract one, pretty big one as a matter of fact, and it's just Don Quixote and Rosinante, his horse. And they're leaning back looking in anticipation at what's coming at them. The second one that he did, he called his abstract Don Quixote, and it's much more abstract. Rosinante is partially cut out and so on. And the same idea, which is they're looking up together in kind of almost horror, because they see this giant thing that they're gonna to have to fight, which is the windmill. And the third one, is this one here. This piece is also very reminiscent of the Doré work. Remember Doré in the last, latter part of the 19th century did an illustration, an illustrated version of Don Quixote. Some of his best work, really wonderful stuff. And this pose and picture are similar to that and also very much similar to Cuyo Valera's piece which stands in the Plaza de España in Madrid. His art history understanding allowed him to create these different versions in different styles. So in addition to the stylistic difference between these three different Don Quixotes, there's also a big difference in the patina, in the finish of the bronze. So Gibbs' first one basically was cast and put outside, and it oxidized based on the pollutants in the air, the rainwater, the sunlight, and so on. That's where that green that we're used to seeing on old bronzes comes from. The next one was the French bronze. Gibbs loved French bronze. You can see the shine where this has all been oxidized with a liver of sulfur mix. It turns it very dark, almost black. And then they do what they call bring it back. So they'll polish with water and brillo pads to get these highlights. And Gibb loved that technique because that really brought out the light and the shadow that he loved to show you in the texture of the bronze. And then this one, the latest one, has color. Now color was not an option for Gibb early on. He, one, he couldn't afford it. And two, the technology hadn't really gotten to that point because each of these colors is based on a very specific mix of chemicals. So what they do is mix the chemicals and then with a torch, flamethrower basically, depending upon the size of the piece, the torch could be up to five, throwing a flame five feet long. They take a torch and they heat the bronze and it causes the pores of the metal to open at about 350 or 400 degrees. At that point, they either stipple with a brush or airbrush on the patina. And what happens is that then as the bronze cools, it bites, they call it, and holds the patina. So that's how you apply it, with 350 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit temperature and then applying these chemical mixes. So you'll have mixes that have cobalt, you'll have mixes that have gold. All of these different colors come out of this, and they're very specific formulas that have been developed over time. So Gibb had a real affinity for Don Quixote. Really, I think because Don Quixote was a knight errant, and Gibb was a knight errant too. They were all out til tilting windmills all their lives. That's what they did. Um, you know, Gibb was tilting the windmill and trying to make a living as an artist, support his family. And Don Quixote was out there trying to bring peace and justice to the world, which was really Gibb's underlying motivation too. If you ever asked him why he did this stuff, he said, you know, it's because I hope that I can touch people's hearts and open them, and that'd let us live in a different world. Gibb also knew that, like Don Quixote, you know, he was living a dream. He used to say, hell, I know I'm a fool. You can't believe in this stuff. He said, but you know, we do believe in it deep down and we do want it, but we've been hurt and disappointed by the world so many times that we're afraid to, but we still got to try. And he said, you know, that's why I do my art to say, hey man, it could be this way. We could get it together and we could create that future that we hope for. We could live in that world. I'm John Geckler for the Gibbs Singleton Museum. Thanks for tuning in.